Right there where you're at, prepare your heart for his word. And prepare your heart for what he has for you today. He is a God that sets his people free. He loves us. Hallelujah. Draw near to him. Draw near to him. Oh. 
Hey, Victory Outreach Inglewood, we want to remind you to join us for our weekly Zoom Bible study. For more information, scan the QR code displayed on the screen to be directed to our website so you can sign up for the Bible study. Once you fill out the form, one of our church staff members will send you the Zoom meeting ID and password so you can join us for the Bible study. You can also go to our website to sign up as well. And don't forget, we also have our weekly prayer meetings every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. You can get the Zoom meeting ID by clicking on the quick response code displayed on the screen or by visiting our website at voinglewood.org. The Bible says in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, that if we give generously and sacrificially, that God will open up the windows of heaven and bless us in unimaginable ways. It's the only time in Scripture where God actually tells people to test Him. Give and see if I don't bless you. God tells his people. Here's a principle from the Bible. Generous giving positions us to receive blessings that we don't even know are waiting for us. So let's trust God and give generously to support our ministry and position yourself to receive a blessing from God. We have made online giving easy. Just click on the quick response code displayed on the screen to be directed to our website to give your tithes or offerings to Victory Outreach Inglewood. You can also visit our website, voinglewood.org, to give online as well. And may God bless you as you give. Blessings to you, Victor Outreach Inglewood, and welcome to our Friday Night Live service. I am going to pray for the needs this evening. And before I do that, I'd like to read to you from the book of John, Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 6. And it tells us here that when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for another two days. He stayed where he was another two days. Rather than coming immediately, rather than speaking the words of healing and life immediately, Jesus stayed where he was another two days. And I wonder if you've ever felt as though you've prayed to God for help in a very desperate situation, and it seems as though he stays where he is for another two days. Well, I want you to know that our faith is perfected in patience, that sometimes it takes a little while for us to wait on God, a little while for us to struggle in the midst of our challenges before he shows up with glory and power. So let God's perfect work be fulfilled in your life as you wait for him to show up in your situation. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord tonight. We're going to pray. We have quite a few needs. We want to pray for Ilson tonight for her unborn baby. We want to lift up Frank tonight for healing. Also for Amanda for healing this evening. We want to pray for Freddie and Cameron, Delmira, for Carmen, Loretta, Connie, uh, baby Cody, for Alex, Chris, Valerie, Abel, Francine, Zoe, Arat, Kevin, Monica, Martin, uh, Stephanie and Rico, all for healing, that God's touch will be upon them. We also want to pray for comfort for the grieving families. We also want to pray for salvation and restoration for Carlos, Irving, Daniel, Anthony, Giselle, Jaylene, Ricardo, Javier, Kimberly, and her daughter. We also want to pray for Jackie, Marlene's family, and Anthony for healing, for salvation, for deliverance. We want to pray for a spiritual revival in Alex's life. We want to pray for protection and peace for teachers and students, for Marlene, for Joseph, for Alex and his marriage. We're going to pray for Vanessa, for Danny and Eric, for Delmira's family. We're going to lift them up tonight for protection, for peace. We're going to pray for God's favor, uh, for Selena, for a job, for Manny, for a job. Also for Gabby, for a job, for Javier, Natalie, Ramona, and Crystal. We also want to pray for wisdom and guidance, for Trisha and for Marlene. We want to pray for Mabel, for Marianne and Vanessa, John and Delmira. We want to lift them up for wisdom, for guidance, also strength for Mabel, for the nurses, 
for Stephanie and her family, for Marlene, Vivica, and Tony, and also that God would break generational curses and the lie they posed to those who have been suffering and struggling for God's deliverance. So let's go before the Lord tonight and ask God for his deliverance power this evening. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we understand that there are times that we have to wait on you. And in that waiting, Father, somehow you perfect our ability to have faith in you. You perfect something in us. And so tonight we ask, Lord God, that you would meet the needs that we have in our lives for our families, for our loved ones and friends, for our church members, for our city and around the world, that your grace will be poured out, that you would move in a powerful way. Father God, I pray that you would ignite our faith, my God, ignite our passion in serving you for prayer for one another, Lord God. We pray, Father, for patience, Lord, for your healing, healing touch, for deliverance and salvation, Father God. We pray that you would move by your power, my God, as you can and only you can. We thank you tonight for who you are and what you're doing. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. And God's people say, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Man, it's a blessing tonight. We have a, a treat for you this evening. And so I pray that you are blessed by tonight's service. And I hope to see you on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Happy Friday. Going to look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse, starting at verse 9 through 13. Talk a little bit about prayer tonight. Amen. Hope everybody's blessed. Amen. So uh, in Matthew 6, 9, the Bible says that this then, this is actually Jesus, you know, with his disciples. And he was telling them, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word tonight. And I just pray for the unction of your spirit, Father, that uh, you, would, you, my God, would move tonight and bless, my God, the hearer of your word. Lord, help us to grow in this area of prayer, to learn more and get more uh, intimate with you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So so I wanted to talk about prayer tonight. I know that, um, you know, everything, our future, everything depends on prayer, you know. You can't overcome your weaknesses without prayer. You can't overcome the devil without prayer. Amen. The plans that God has to prosper you. Amen. Your hope for their future. Amen. The Jeremiah 29, 11. It won't come to pass without prayer. You won't grow without prayer. You won't have victory over sin or temptation without prayer. You won't fulfill your calling and your purpose without prayer. Your life won't change without prayer. Amen. If you, if you fight, if you, if you struggle with sin, you won't overcome that without prayer. You know, prayer is like one of the most important things that we do, that we can do. You know, in Thessalonians, it says to pray without ceasing. In Colossians, it says devote yourself to prayer. In Ephesians, it says pray in the spirit with all kinds of prayers and requests. So as Christians, it's wise, amen, to learn all we can about prayer, to invest in prayer. And there's a lot of passages uh, in the Bible, you know, that teach us about prayer. Um, there's a lot of beautiful prayers, amen, that we can pattern ourselves after or learn from in the Bible, amen. But here tonight, I just wanted to look at the, um, this prayer, man, because this is a, the words of Jesus teaching about prayer. So the first thing he says is, is our Father who art in heaven or our Father in heaven. You know, he addresses God as a Father, you know, Address God as a father and, you know, that speaks of the intimacy that, you know, you have like a, a parent child where you have, um, you know, a, a parent, a child will come to a parent like with 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 full confidence and trust, you know, and approach him. I was thinking about, um, you know, how God is so, so vast and so powerful and so uh, he dwells in inapproachable light and, and he's so awesome and powerful. But yet. We're, he says that we're to come to him like a child will come to a father, like a child will come to a father. You know, I was thinking about like um, like an illustration, like say of a super a superstar uh, athlete or something, Michael Jordan or something. You know, he could be in a in in a, in the stadium, you know, with all these fans, 
And but yet all these people that are there, you know, to see him. But yet a child, his son will will have a different relationship than all the people, you know, or or Kobe Bryant or or like a boxer when he when he wins a fight. You know, he'll, he'll bring his son into the ring and, and hold him right there. And all, all these people are all around, you know, uh, spectators. But the, but the son has a special place, a special place with him that nobody else has. And it's kind of like that because God is so awesome and so, and so mighty and so powerful. But yet we're to come to him at like, like, a, like, a, like a son, you know. And, and, first, and John 1, 12, the Bible says, let me look it up. It says that yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So we have a special place, a special manner in, that we can approach God that, that other people don't, you know, people, other people don't have, you know, like that full, complete dependence and trust, amen, that we could come to God at, like as, as a child father relationship. So that's the first thing he says, you know, that, you know, you address him like a father, our father who art in heaven, though he is so like so far, but yet he's so close, though he's so powerful, yet he's willing to for us to come to him. Then he says, um, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, that that word hallowed means like to make holy. Now, God's name is already holy, so we're not praying that he makes it holy, but when you say hallowed be your name, it's like you're saying like the, 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 holiness, of, the holiness of your name, let that continue to be manifested and expanded, you know. And one of the things that the Bible shows us is that the name of God, I mean, he takes his name very serious, you know. And even in the, in, 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 in the Ten Commandments, in the Ten Commandments, you know, one of the first things he says is, is you know, I was going to read it to you, for you guys. It says, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord your God will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Hallowith be thy name. You know, and, and the, the, there's something serious about the name of God, you know, that in, in the Ten Commandments where you should, you know, he's giving, don't murder, don't kill. Don't misuse the name of the Lord. And then in our society, our culture, you know, people tend to do that a lot. You know, they'll say, oh, Jesus or Jesus Christ or 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 take the Lord's name in vain without like they don't realize what they're doing or what they're doing. You know, and, and, um, and the Bible says that every idle word and man is going to have it's going to have a, a consequence. Let me read it. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted and by your words, you will be condemned. That's in Matthew 12, 36. But the name of God I mean, is to be is to be hollowed. I mean, I know Pastor did a great job Sunday articulating uh, about the, the great I am. You know, he's everything. He's everything you need him to be. And when we pray, hallowed be your name, it's like we're that greatness of your name. Let that continue to be expanded within within our lives man. within within our city, within our within our country. Let the, the hollow, the, the holiness, the beauty, the, the provision, all that your name means. Let that continue to be expanded and grow and grow, you know, in our world world in our society and like it's, it's a trip because it's about prayer and it's not really saying oh you know like sometimes we you know we think we're going to come and just ask for things but when Jesus was teaching about prayer the first that's the first thing he says you know hallowed be your name hallowed that's like that's the first thing he teaches about prayer hallowed be your name holy be your name and it's like um you know not oh I need this or I need that but that's like the your first focus, amen, that reverence for the name of Almighty God. You know, Jesus is the name that is above all names, you know. The Bible says that at the name of Jesus, amen, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, amen, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Then he says, um, your kingdom come and your will be done. And I was just thinking about the, you know, it's, a, it's about his will and, and his ways and his kingdom. There's a movie. Uh, it's, it's called it's a cartoon movie. I, I don't remember it very detailed, but I remember a little bit, the little part where it's called Horton. Horton hears a who. And it's about like this elephant guy. 
and he finds like a little flower or something. It has a little speck on it. And on that little speck, he can hear like there's people, that, there's people living in there. He can hear them having conversations and, and there's people living there. And then all the people around him, they think he's crazy. Like, and at the end, they're trying to like make him destroy the flower and all this stuff. But, but that, that little speck, and man, that's kind of how our earth is in this universe. That's kind of how our world is in, in the kingdom of God. It's just such an insignificant little speck in a vast real world. The real world is the kingdom of God. The real world is heaven where God is. I mean, we're just like an insignificant speck, amen. In our society, our world, amen, it, it's like chasing after the wind, like Ecclesiastes says, like a Solomon spoke of when he tried everything on this earth, it's like chasing after the winds. And the only things that matter are the things that lead that, that are that go from this earth and are able to penetrate the heavens, you know. Those are the things that really matter. Everything else is, 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 is perishing. So it, it just it gives it like a little illustration that, that we're, it's so, we're so almost like nothing, a little speck in a vast universe, you know, a little grain of sand in a, in a big, uh, beautiful beach, something that's just like so insignificant, you know. The Bible even says, man, what is man that you're mindful of him? You know, we're such a little, a little thing, but yet God loves us. And yet God is concerned for us. And yet God wants us to be with him in heaven. And, he, and in, the, in the prayer, it says, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The, the, you know, your, your purposes, your plan, let your will be done. You know, it, like as it is in heaven, let that, let that heavenly touch be down here with us. Let that heavenly influence be down here with us. Let, let, that, let that consume me, my, my God. What's in, what's in heaven? What's in with you? Let that come upon me and let, let it influence me that I could walk and be that salt and be that light, that I could be a, a little glimpse of heaven while, while I'm on this earth. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then he says, give us this day our daily bread. And I believe he's talking about food there, but he's, but he's talking about meeting your needs. You know, of course, man, God wants to meet your needs. Of course, you know, we pray, we present our needs to the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. Then he says, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. You know, he's talking about forgiving, forgiveness of sin. You know, it doesn't say if you sin, but he says, for, you know, to pray, forgive, forgive us our debts. Like it's, you know, it's we're we're gonna fall short. We're gonna we're gonna sin. You know, against the Lord. You know, the Bible says that if you say you have no sin, that, that you're a liar. The Bible says, and one of the things is that God, His nature, man, like He wants to forgive you. Amen. First John one nine. If you confess our, if we confess, if we confess Him, He's faithful. He's just. He will forgive our sins. He will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And I like the way you see uh, God's heart in, in, um, in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, where he says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. He wants to forgive. He wants to forgive. That's his nature it is to forgive, you know. And I think about the... You know, the, the, the story of the prodigal son, you know, that picture of a father, you know, and his son. And, and, and it's like, God, how, how when the son finally came to his senses, when the son finally decided to go back, man, the moment he saw him, man, he didn't, he didn't even let him like, like walk in shame through the town, through the people. He, he ran to, to the son like he, he, he didn't want him to feel none of that, you know. Just this God's heart, you know, of, of forgiveness. That's why he says, you know, as we forgive our debtors, you know, that's his nature. So he doesn't want us to hold grudges. He doesn't want us to hold unforgiveness because that's we're not behaving as he is. That's his nature. That's that's who he is. You know, a forgiving God, a, a, a merciful God, a gracious God. So so we need to forgive people. Never hold grudges. You know, sometimes I know it's hard when people do us wrong and people hurt us. Amen. But I, I have my own experiences. And man, if you I mean, because you could forgive somebody. I forgive them and still have like like, you know, bitterness or anger. But you can forgive somebody and really, really forgive them where it's gone and you're free, you know. And I've experienced that before. If you stay long enough in the presence of God, and man, he'll give you victory in that manner where you don't, you don't, 
You don't have the bitterness. You don't, and you're freed. You're freed from the anger and the bitterness. Amen. And that's that's his will. I mean, that's how he is. Amen. He doesn't hold grudges. He doesn't hold bitterness. He doesn't remember things. He just truly just lets them go. Amen. So forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Then he says, lead us not into temptation. Amen. Not that he's going to lead us into a temptation, man. But we're, he says, man, we're to pray, man, to pray. We're to, we have like an enemy that's real and hates us and wants to destroy us. And, and he wants, and we need to come to God, amen, to be protected from that, to be delivered from that. He says, deliver us from the evil one, amen. There's a force a dark force, amen, that hates us, that's after us, that, that wants to destroy us, kill us, harm us, discourage us, lie to us, trick us, trick us and, and deceive us and, and take us to hell. And without praying, man, we, we, we fall victim, we fall prey. Many have, many have, you know, walked away or allowed a, a deception you know, misunderstanding, unforgiveness, or certain things, I mean, to, to step away from God or walk away from God. So he says, man, that should also be a part, you know, of our, of our, of our prayer life. But there's many, many beautiful teachings about prayer. But tonight I just wanted to touch on a few of these, you know. I know, like, I was, I don't know if you're, if you're a Catholic, you know this one, because growing up uh, as a Catholic, like me, you know, they teach you this when you're young, and I remember, you know, in the Catholic Church, they have little confession booths. You you go inside a little little room and you sit down and and you open the you knock or something, and the priest is like on the other side of a little little window, and then you're supposed to confess your sins. And and then when you're done, he'll tell you, okay, go out there and say, you know, ten our fathers or hail Marys or whatever. And then and and then you, you sometimes you have a lot of sins. You gotta say like twenty our fathers. And I remember like. You know, being there, and I remember, oh, Father in heaven, and then, then you you start saying them fast because you have so many to go through. Father in heaven, and I don't think that's what God meant. You know, there's a lot more depth, amen, to to the, the Lord's teaching about prayer right here. So, uh, hopefully, you know, something got ministered to you tonight, and I just pray that we would grow, we would grow, amen, in prayer, that we would grow in, in, in our intimacy with God, because everything is depending on that, our future, our, our, our legacy, our children, our church, our city, everything is depending on us connecting with our Heavenly Father and allowing His will and His purposes and His plan, amen, to be manifest through us. Everything is depending on prayer, amen. So tonight, amen, I just want to encourage you to continue praying, amen. Nothing to it but to do it and learn more about prayer, study more about prayer, you know, and let it be about God's will and God's purposes and learn and grow in prayer because everything is, is riding on, on our prayer life, amen. So with that, amen, I hope you guys are blessed, amen. We'll see you guys Sunday and let's just say another quick prayer amen father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come lord your will be done in each and every single one of our lives lord meet our needs father god deliver us from evil my god and have your way my god bless your people in jesus name amen